Hello fellow hobbyists, this is Tommy with another Operation Battle Ready video. This one devoted to the color red. We've heard from some of our Patreon backers that they have a difficult time getting rich, deep reds on their models and they always feel like their reds are really flat. Uh, so that's what we're going to try to solve for you in this episode. So here we're laying out our colors. Um, for reds, I love going to Reaper's beautiful, beautiful reds. Uh, the first thing we lay down is some red brick. Uh, that's some deep red. Uh, the next color we lay is Reaper's blood red. Uh, possibly my favorite red in the whole line. Uh, we have the phoenix red, which is a, a very kind of orangish red. We skip the flat red, which is called fire red. Uh, and then we put down some fire orange. Um, because that pure red is the one thing we don't want. Okay, so um, now here I'm creating my gradient. Uh, I'm mixing half steps between all these reds. These reds are, are pretty close to each other. Um, you see when I mix them, yeah, see there, you see when I mix them how, uh, how much they kind of don't change or subtly change. Uh, the difference between the uh, blood and the uh, deep is the most. Uh, but yeah, those, those reds are really close together and we only need half steps between them. Um, so we're going to start by laying down a coat of the red brick. Uh, red brick's a beautiful, dark color, rich. Uh, it's a great base to build red up of. Uh, I like to build all my red out of the shadows. Uh, I don't like to start with a mid-tone and then shade it down. Uh, I like to start with the darkest tone and, and just keep building on up. So this first coat is just a nice, even coat of uh, Reaper's red brick over the entire surface. <laughs> You'll have to excuse the pain on my hands. There was a priming incident just previous to this uh, tutorial filming, so didn't quite get fully recovered before it was time to shoot. Now we're going to start building our red up by uh, doing the first layer of the first mix, which is the uh, half and half red brick and deep red, um, which is a really, really beautiful mix, as you see there. Um, and we're covering most of the surface areas. We're just not going deep into the shadows, into the specific creases. Otherwise, we're doing a full base coat over the whole thing again. Now we're up to the, doing a, a base coat of um, the pure deep red, and um, I'm calling it a base coat because we're still we're not really emphasizing the the highlighted points yet. It's it's more of a general base coat. We're just starting to establish those shadows as we allow each layer. We allow those shadows to be a little bigger. We leave a little bit more of the undercoat showing. Uh, remember these are nicely thin paints, they're translucent, so all those deep reds under this red are, are visible through it and providing a base for it. So yeah, each time we loop around this thing, we're now up to the mix of deep red and blood red. Uh, each time we loop around uh, the lap on this kilt, uh, we're hitting the contours, we're, we're trying to now favor the bumps, uh, the outward bulges, uh, the edges of things. Um, we're building up our highlight base, uh, going through, hitting all the seats, see all those uh, folds, we're riding the edge on those. Uh, remembering to pay attention to the bottom edge of the kill.
Now we'll be starting at mix of Blood Red and Phoenix Red, uh, which is really bold. It's really deep, and uh, I like those colors mixed together better than I like their Fire Red. Uh, the Fire Red seems to be the one red that, that is kind of flat compared to these vibrant reds they have. As of this point, our um, vertical highlights there along those seams are still writing the full uh, length of, of that piece of the model. Uh, that'll change when we get into the extreme highlights. Um, now, because of my uh, crappy sculpting here, you see this billow right here that I'm, I'm pointing out? It's there. It's weak. Uh, you know, I'm not a dramatic sculptor. Uh, I'm not a professional at that. Um, but uh, it, it kind of can read weird under some camera angles. But uh, yeah, I assure you, there's a billow there. We are now on a layer of pure phoenix red, which we are really now uh, working as a highlight. We're, we're really pulling away from those deep areas, uh, really sticking to the higher points and the edges on the model now. Now we can start working in some of the extreme highlights. Uh, we've mixed in a little bit of that fire orange, probably one part fire orange to three parts phoenix red uh, to create this first layer of highlights that uh, I would consider extreme highlights. See we're sticking close to the top edges of things, uh, keeping to the uh, sharpest edges uh, and, and trying to cling to the uh, most outward bulging surfaces. Now there's nothing thinning these paints other than water. That's the only thing we need to get these thinned down nice. Uh, when you've got your paints properly thinned, you see how nicely they blend into each other. That's because that translucency is showing that base color underneath it and the base color underneath that. We're using that transparency uh, to our advantage here. Uh, now we've got about a 50-50 mix between the fire orange and the phoenix red. And now we're really uh, favoring edges and seams.
And as we wrap up these extreme highlights, we get to the cherry on top, the glaze. GW's uh, Citadel Bloodletter. Uh, these glazes are great, they're pre-made. Um, they're the right consistency, they flow well. Uh, remember, a glaze is not a wash. When we're doing a glaze, we're creating a thin, even film over the entire surface. Uh, that film uh, is gonna help blend those colors together even more. And here we have the finished product, a rich, vibrant red. Uh, if you enjoyed this video or uh, found it useful in any way, uh, please go ahead and like and subscribe. And you can find us on Patreon and Facebook. We are Operation Battle Ready.